Well, good evening, Shiloh Church family. It's so good to be back with you on this Wednesday night. We're so grateful to have the opportunity to gather at least in this fashion on this Wednesday night. It was so good to be back together this past Sunday morning for those who felt comfortable and were able to be here. Um, our services at 10 this past Sunday morning were just awesome. Uh, from my perspective, just to be able to be together and to be able to see much of the Shiloh family. We're just so grateful for each of you that came out and grateful for all of those who helped us facilitate the different things to be able to do the service. We will be back together again at 10 a.m., Lord willing, on Sunday morning in the Family Life Center, socially distanced, of course, and we have the mask available if you feel that you need one. Bring your own if you have it. If not, we'll have them available. And also hand sanitizer. You can bring the individual hand sanitizers if you have them. And we'll also have others available to supplement that as well. So it was so good to be able to see you and to be back together. For those who didn't feel like that they could come, uh, we're looking forward to when everyone feels comfortable being back together in the house of the Lord here at Shiloh. I love my Shiloh family. And uh, we have certainly missed being able to gather and to have the opportunity of corporate worship. I pray that out of this pandemic situation that we have all dealt with, that one positive that could come out of it is a newfound appreciation for the opportunity of corporate worship. There is something a little extra special about corporate worship that cannot be duplicated in any other fashion. And so we're grateful for opportunities to meet like this by way of Facebook uh, for the times that we need to, but there's nothing like being together. So Sunday was wonderful. We look forward to being back together at 10 a.m. this Sunday morning in the Family Life Center. And then on Sunday night, of course, being the first Sunday night of the month, our men's and women's ministry meetings will have online devotions once again. So please plan to tune in for that, 6 p.m. for our women's ministry, 6.30 p.m. for our men's ministry and we certainly appreciate Sister Brandy uh, and Brother Willis that have been doing this for us. We're looking forward to being able to be back together in more corporate ways uh, in the future. And just pray that God will just continue to bless and give wisdom um, to all of those that are working here in the leadership positions to try to make the right decisions as best that we know. We ask you to continue to pray for those of our Shiloh family that have special needs and ask you to continue to lift them up, whether it's spiritual needs or physical needs or financial. We know God's able. We ask you to continue to lift them up. Would you pray with us now? Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather back together for a few moments to look into the Word of God. Words, I hope, will be encouraging to my family of Shiloh. And Father, I also ask that you would bless those among our Shiloh family that have special needs, whether they are just as I have stated, whether they are spiritual, physical, or financial needs, family situations, job concerns, whatever they are, we know that you're able and thank God that you're willing. You told us we could cast our cares upon you because you care for us and we're so glad that you do. So we just put all those needs right now at the feet of our master and ask you to meet every one of them according to your perfect will. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for the privilege of being a child of the King. We just glorify your name. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Well, my prayer sort of leads me into what I want to speak to you about tonight, some words that I hope will be encouraging to you. A lot of you know that music has been a big part of my life. It always will be. I love gospel music and hymns and convention songs and contemporary Christian music, and I just love music that uplifts and glorifies the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. And there's an old favorite song of mine that I must tell you that I'm borrowing from for what I would title tonight's time of being together, this message. And I'm borrowing from an old song that I dearly love. And so tonight, I want to speak to you for a few moments on this thought. Praise God. Praise God. I'm a child of the King. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7, we find these words. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. What a wonderful thing it is to be adopted into the family of God, to become an heir with God through Christ, through being born again. And so how many times perhaps in your life have you heard people talk about, uh, perhaps you've even said to yourself, well, I sure wish I had some rich relative out somewhere that maybe I don't know about, that when they pass away, 
they would remember me and they'd leave me a bunch of money. And you've all heard the old story about the rich uncle and many people would like to have that to happen. Well, why? Because they're longing to be wealthy or to be rich or to have a lot of money. But may I remind you tonight that the richest person, the richest heir, if you want to put it that way, the most wealthy person is not the one who has the most money in the bank, but the one who has Christ in their heart. Let me say that again. The richest and most wealthy person is not the one that has lots of money in the bank, but it's the one that has Christ in their heart. Now, as I said, many of you would recognize that old song that I grew up singing that we're borrowing that title from, uh, to use for our title tonight, borrowing from the words of that song about, praise God, I'm a child of the King. What a joy it is to know that we are children of the Most High God. Now, I know this is the case because of the declaration of our text. For all of those who have been redeemed, for all who have been saved, it says that we are now heirs of God through Christ. So for just a few moments tonight, may I remind you and what I hope would encourage you with some of the things which it means that it means that we have become heirs of God through Christ. And just a few things I'll mention to you, not all of them, but a few that I'd like to just take a, a brief look at tonight. First of all, may I remind you that if we're truly saved, born again, we are heirs of divine blessings. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord makes us rich beyond measure. That's another reason I say the richest person is not the one with the most money in the bank. It's the one that has Christ in their heart because the blessings of the Lord make us rich beyond measure. In Romans 8 and 32, it says, He who did not spare his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? One writer declared this. They said, When the church lacks blessing, even the world knows something is wrong, for blessing is the inheritance of of the true church. And that is so true. So can I just remind you, listen, I don't know what kind of week you've had. I don't even know what kind of day you've had. You've probably had some challenges this week, just like I've had some challenges and everybody else I know has challenges. We all have them, but in the midst of it all, can I tell you that you are an heir of the divine blessings of God if you have truly been born again. So the next time that the going gets tough, just remind yourself, I'm a child of the King, so the divine blessings of God, they are mine. So I can say, praise God, I am an heir of divine blessings. Secondly, tonight, I want to remind you that we are heirs of the promises of God. In Romans 10 and 12, it declares, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Can I take a moment right now just to say that in the midst of all that's going on right now, with all that's going on and all that we see, can I just tell you that as pastor of Shiloh Church, I will say and speak for this congregation, we do not condone racism. We do not believe in racism. We believe racism is a sin. The Bible clearly declares, just as I have read to you from the book of Romans, God makes no distinction, it says, between the Jew and the Greek. But can I tell you what that means is? God makes no distinction between the person whose color, who the color of their skin is white or black or some other shade of color. God looks upon the heart. God died for all colors of men and women. God loves all colors of men and women. Apparently, he likes the varying colors of skin because he's the one that made them. And so can I tell you with all that's going on right now, may we stand for what is right. May we stand for truth. May we stand for justice. And may we say that we believe that all lives matter because Jesus died for all lives. May we uphold uh, the heart of those who are willing to try to get a point of cross in a peaceful manner, but may we not encourage or uphold those who want to hijack a tragic situation to loot and to burn and to destroy. That's not of God. And that's not peaceful protest. 
But let me remind you, the verse I'm reading from, the reason that we can all be heirs of the promises of God, red and yellow, black and white, are all heirs of the promises of God if they've been born again, if they have been saved, because there is no distinction uh, in Jew or Greek or others. The same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. So, first of all, we're heirs of divine blessings. Secondly, we are heirs of the promises of God. Hebrews 6 and 12 says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We need to live like we've inherited the promises of God. Act like we've inherited the promises of God. Talk like we've inherited the promise of God. Don't be down in the mouth and depressed and despondent. I know we all have to battle that. It comes against us all, but we don't have to stay there. And one of the ways to pull yourself out of that depression, to pull yourself out of those things that come against you, is to say, hey, I am an heir of Sal. I am an heir of the divine promises of God and the blessings of God. And you need to remind yourself of that. Thirdly, can I say that not only do I say, praise God, I'm an heir of the promises of God, but thirdly, we are heirs of his righteousness. The only reason we have any righteousness is because we have become heirs of his. Let me say that again. The only reason we have any righteousness is if we have become heirs of his. And if we are his child, truly born again, repentant of our sins, that is what has happened. We have never had any righteousness of our own. We never will have any righteousness of our own. The only righteousness that we have is that which has been imputed to us as we have become an heir of his righteousness by being born again. Hebrews 11 and 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world, and, watch this, became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. You'll never live good enough to get to heaven. I'll never live good enough to get to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I can be good enough to get there. I'm on my way to heaven because I have inherited the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I have been declared righteous by God because I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been redeemed. And that's the only reason that I have any righteousness. It's only the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And notice what I want you to rem be reminded of here. This righteousness, it becomes ours by that sanctifying faith in what God says. Now, that's important. I, I want to read that again. This righteousness I'm talking about that we become heirs of after salvation, it becomes ours by that sanctifying faith in what God says. Did you catch that? In what God says. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what others say. That's one of the reasons I enjoy hearing Sister Brenda sing that song so well. Uh, talks about you say. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't even matter what others say. What matters is what does God say about me? Can I tell you what God says about me? Can I tell you what he says about you? If you've truly been born again, he says you're my child. He says you're my heir. He says you have been redeemed and you are now an heir of the righteousness of my son. That's what God says, and I'd rather depend on what God says. Praise God, I am an heir of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And fourthly tonight, can I say that we are also heirs of salvation? Hebrews 11 and 14 says, I'm sorry, Hebrews 1 and 14 says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? One writer declared, salvation can neither be bought or earned. Salvation is both present and future. Present salvation begins when one becomes a child of God. Future salvation is realized when Jesus comes. That writer went on to say, present salvation saves from sin. Future salvation saves from the consequence of sin. Aren't you glad that God has sent forth those ministering spirits for all of those who will inherit salvation? And who is that? 
whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, whoever is convicted of their sin and convicted of their condition of lostness by the Holy Spirit of God, and they turn to Jesus Christ, and they ask Him for forgiveness of their sins, and they repent of their sins, and they ask Him to become their Savior, they are redeemed according to His Word, and that is who becomes heirs of salvation. Psalm 149 and 4 declares, For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. That's why God can take something that's not beautiful at all and turn it into something beautiful. There's an old song that says, Something Beautiful. That's what he made out of my life. Aren't you glad that he does that? And then let me remind you also that not only can I say, praise God, I'm an heir of salvation, but I can also say that we are heirs of the kingdom. This world is not my final home. James 2 and 5 says, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him. He promised to those who love him. We have become heirs of the kingdom as well if we're truly born again in Jesus Christ. His saints, the saved, are joint heirs of Christ. Can we not praise the Lord for his wonderful plan for his kingdom of glory? Can we not rejoice that through grace, by faith, if we've truly repented of our sins and received him as our Savior, we are heirs to all these things and so much more. Praise God, I'm an heir of his kingdom. Is it any wonder that the hymn writer could shout, all glory to God, I'm a child of the King. Is it any wonder that we should rejoice in being able to say, and I'm so glad that I can say, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. I don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. I don't even know what you are face the rest of tonight. I don't know what we'll face in the future to come, but this I know, if we've truly been born again, we're children of the Most High God, and God takes care of His own. Let me say that again. If you know you're a child of the King, hold to this confidence. God takes care of His own. I hope you too can say, praise God, I'm a child of the King. But if you can't, you could by simply calling upon the name of the Lord embracing the gospel of Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins, you too can be adopted. You too can become born again. You too can become an heir of all these things and so much more. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, you've come across this by way of video or however you saw it, and you've decided to become a child of God, I really wish you would reach out to us here at Shiloh Church. Reach out to us and let us know, hey, I made a decision for Christ tonight, or I made a decision to recommit my life to Jesus. It would encourage us more than we have words to describe. God bless you. I love you. I am so glad to be able to say this. I'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in the Family Life Center God bless you. It's going to be great to be together. We'll see you then.